What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another Daily Drop brought to you by TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does, it's our very own publisher, Andrew Jones and AJ. In this Carolina football-related drop, we're going to be talking about Carolina players that have finished in the top 10 of the Heisman voting you know, in the history of the award. And it does go back a ways all the way back to 1948. And I think people probably know who that is. If you have any understanding of Carolina football history, and it starts with, with Charlie Choo Choo justice. So AJ, we can just kind of go and go through this list organically. And we'll start way back in the forties. We'll start in 1948 and 49 Charlie Choo Choo justice finishing second in the voting in both 48 in 49, he's the closest Carolina guy that ever that's ever got to it. We'll, we'll buy even a, a long stretch in some ways when you look at who the guy next on this list and where he finished and where the rest finished. So he's as close as Carolina's ever got. I think in some, depending on who you ask, he probably deserved to win it in some ways. And again, I wasn't alive back in the 40, 40s and you know late 40s and neither were you. But when you look at Charlie Choo Choo Justice, he has a statue outside the Keenan Football Center for a reason. And uh, when you look, consider the fact in back-to-back years, he was just that close to winning the Heisman. It just speaks to how good of a player he was back then, doesn't it, AJ? Yeah, you know, my dad wrote a book about college football during World War II, and there's a chapter devoted to the Bainbridge Naval Air Station, which is located near Aberdeen, Maryland, at, um, uh, Port Defiance, Maryland. One of my and, favorite podcasts we've ever done, either you and your dad did. I, I love, I'm a World War II buff, so I just found it fascinating, but I, I'll have well, to try to link that and, podcast below. Uh, I kind of helped it with a lot of the research for that book, and I went up there to the old, it's a closed down, it's pretty run down. I, I got, I had a guy give me a tour of that place, and you can still see remnants of where they played football, and Choo Choo actually played on that football team. And he was a star. That's where the Choo Choo uh, nickname came from, because they say he ran like a runaway freight train. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a play where against uh, Fort Davis, I think, where he ran to the right at the right sideline and ran back to the left sideline and cut in and darted 60 yards for a touchdown. And they say he ran 150 yards to score a 60 yard touchdown. He was a stud then. They went to war. And so when he came out, he still had four years of eligibility to play in college. And those Bainbridge teams were playing college football. Mm-hmm. If you go back and look at college rankings in 1942, 43, 44, even 45, you see a lot of you. North Carolina had a brief flight team that was really, really good. And they took in guys from other teams. For example, I believe it was um, maybe it was Hopple on Cassie or somebody, some star from legend from Ohio State, plays in a game with Ohio State in September and October, plays on one of these pre flight type teams like Iowa pre flight. They played Ohio State played his teammates. You had NFL guys playing. So Choo Choo got to Carolina already a stud after serving in the war. And he was really good right out of the gate. You could play four years back then. It was before they did the freshman ineligibility rule. And he was sensational. It's the best four-year run in Carolina football history. The 48 team was the only Carolina team ever ranked number one in the country. And they finished, I think that team finished the season third in the country, which is the highest finish ever in Carolina. So he's a legend. He finished second in the Heisman balloting in second of years. The next guy to do that was, um, uh, gosh, from Arkansas, Darren uh, McFadden. Back, back in, Darren McFadden, yes, six, 2007, 2008, something like that, was the next one to finish runner-up back-to-back years. So, yeah, maybe he should have gotten it one of those years, but maybe he shouldn't have. Maybe he was just second best guy both years. There's no shame in that. He's the only sports statue, like player statue that Carolina has for football or basketball. So he's a legend. He's big time. And he was back to back those first two years. There's a song all the way choo choo that if you, uh, <laughs> you should Google it after yeah. you finish watching this and listen to it. Not many guys had songs made about it. I know. Looks about him. And and actually, if you know the um God, I'm drawing a blank now again. This is an organic podcast, but there's a movie that um Jessica Lang and Randy or Dennis Quaid did, uh, Everybody's All American. Written the book was written by Frank DeFord, the greatest uh-huh. sports writer who have, who's ever lived. And the and DeFord said the character was very loosely based on Choo Choo Justice. Oh, cool. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. John Goodman's in the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, watch it. And why and it's based at LSU, but understand that it was actually I, I think you know, Hollywood always 
dolls things up. They thought that the LSU motif would actually sell better uh, because it's a football first school, but it was largely or loosely based on Choo Choo. Yeah. Yeah. He's just, yeah. Fantastic, man. And, kind of wild that he's the only statue for football or basketball. I don't know why, what basketball, I don't know what the basketball program is. We're going to hit that statues, in July, man. Yeah. man. Put, some, put some statues July. outside of that Smith center. Come on guys. We'll have a separate drop on that. I don't know what the heck they've been waiting for. All right, AJ, uh, next on the list, Mike Voigt. And again, you're just going to see the contrast number finish number eight. And that's behind Choo Choo at two. That's as close as anybody's ever gotten at Carolina besides the other three guys we'll talk about here in a second, but Mike Voigt back in 1976, obviously just a really, really good player for North Carolina. And again, you're eight. So it, you're not that close, but again, top 10, you're obviously a heck of a football player. So yeah, Mike Voigt deserves some recognition for, for being, I guess, essentially third closest on this list behind Charlie Choo Choo justice. It wanted to. Yeah. Back-to-back ACC player of the year. Uh, I think a guy that, fully embodied the uh, Bill Dooley way as much as anyone that ever played. John Bunning, the yeah. guy that embodied the Bill Dooley way, by the way. Bunning was a glass eater. And, and wow, Voight that. was a glass eater running the ball. Yeah, uh, it, the, A lot of the older people who, who watched the team in the 70s and, and were old enough to really grasp and fully remember – the Mike Voigt era will remember the 47 carry game against Duke when he basically single-handedly beat Duke mm-hmm. and had a big touchdown late in that game. He was also, he was a he was a solid NFL player, played the Vikings for a while. He was a character, a personality, quite frankly, there should be a movie made about him because he was such a character. Um, I had him on my radio show in Wilmington, gosh, in around 2000. It, it, one of his buddies also called in. He told his buddy he was going to be on the show, and, he, and his buddy's sitting there telling stories about him while while the uh, Space Cowboy's sitting there listening and laughing and loving it and just remembering the crazy days. This is a crazy time in America mm. where kind of everything went, you know, everything kind of passed muster, and, and then you've got this guy who's wild and crazy in so many ways and living a full life, and on Saturday, throwing the ball 47 times against your arch rival. And he's winning ACC Player of the Year awards and going to the NFL and stuff. So he, he, if today he would be the great quote that people like Armando Baycott are, and he would probably be an Armando of football in many ways. I think oh, yeah. he lived. I think he lived harder than Armando does, though. I think Armando. Yeah. I don't know if you can get away with that anymore in today's world, Candy. Social media is cameras too. Yeah, I mean, if when you talk to players from back then, they just they you could almost you could see the love in their eyes and affection that they had for Mike Boyd and and that era, that Mm -hmm. those teams, that era, their grit. I mean, we'll do a Bill Dooley pod. I got to know Bill Dooley a little bit in his later years too, and and just man, that's that's that was so important to the ACC eventually taking football far more seriously in North Carolina. Yeah. And Voight, just a stud. Yeah, man, it really is. And just a lot of people, the older generation of, will obviously know and have a, a big reverence for him because he was just that, that good. And, and, you know, like you said, a glass eater, which is just a fantastic term to use in my opinion. So AJ next on the list, 1970, Don McCauley finished ninth. And again, it's another running back, man. I mean, is Carolina like RBU? I mean, is it? it I mean, when you look at the history, they were for at, a while. Yeah, even in recent for years, for a while I mean, they had the most thousand yard rushers of any school. Yeah, I mean, even in recent years, when you look at some of the guys, Sean Drawn, I know he played in the league for a while. Javante Williams, Michael Carter. There's guys I'm not even thinking of right now. Carolina did Drawn run for it? Did, did he run for a thousand? I'd have to go back and look. look, look. I thought they had a long period between Jonathan Linton in 97 and Gio Bernard with Gio. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I had to go back and look at but they had a period there. Like talking, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Macaulay in a second, who, by the way, might be the greatest storyteller in Carolina football history, but mm-hmm. yeah, they had a period there where they would have multiple thousand yard guys in a season. Remember this is back in an 11 game season. Yeah. You, you had, you had um, Derek Fenner and Amos Lawrence. You had Ethan Horton and and uh, Derek Fenner, excuse me. You had uh, uh, Amos Lawrence and uh, Calvin Bryant. You had Ethan Horton and Calvin Bryant. You, uh, I believe that um, 
there were maybe two of the years they had multiple thousand yard rushers. You had famous Amos Lawrence for four straight years running for a thousand yards. I mean, they they were running back you. They were found that sucker, plunge forward, turn out offensive linemen of the NFL like there was no tomorrow. And won games that way. If you go back and look at the scores of those games, you could see that so many of them were like that. As mm-hmm. far as McCauley goes, it's totally been lost in time. And it's really unfortunate, but O.J. Simpson in 1968 set the world on fire at Southern Cal, all right? Set the world on fire. And two years later, Don McCauley broke his single-season rushing record, had the yeah. all-time NCAA single-season rushing record. ACC Player of the Year, McCauley had a really solid career in the pros, played a long time with the Colts, uh, a really, really good guy, great ambassador in North Carolina football, one of the great storytellers of all time. And back in the John Bunning days was, okay, you know, dishing on John every once in a while, which I always appreciated. And I think it's somebody that needs to be remembered in Carolina football lore more than he is. When they show that video board, damn it, you got to have a guy like Don, John, Don McCauley up there. No. You got to do something with him because he was a stud. Mm-hmm. And not enough – Carolina fans know about the stud basketball players in that time. But, you know, football was really good for a while. Mm-hmm. And they don't know enough about guys like him. A lot of them may have never heard of Mike Boyd. And go, but go look him up. V-O-I-G-H-T. Go ahead. Look him up. And pretty impressive. And Macaulay was really, really good. And because he set that record, and that was early, and that was when Dick Crum was finally getting it done. Dick Crum, excuse me, Bill Dooley was finally getting it done at Carolina and starting to change some of the perception. I think if Macaulay did that six years later, he may have been higher. He may have gotten more votes and been higher on that list because I think his, his accomplishment would have been more nationally respected. Agreed. Agreed. And Sean drawn 866 in 2008 was the most he had. So never a thousand yard rusher at Carolina, but still a guy that played in the NFL for a long time. And even, you know, look, not statistically super impressive at Carolina, but again, I think that kind of speaks to the running backs Carolina's had, because again, he had a long in in, uh, NFL. Willie Parker. Yeah, Willie really Parker, Parker, man, a guy that didn't barely play the lick at Carolina and goes to win a Super Bowl for the Steelers. I mean, it's just. He did have a 77 yard touchdown run against Maryland, and that was always held over John Bunning's head. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. His was a wild story. I remember my dad was is a Steelers fan. So I remember when it, during his era and just being like, wait, because I was younger, like, wait, you telling me this guy didn't play a lick at Carolina, really? And it's just hard for me to wrap my head around that. But, you know, some guys bloom a little bit later in life and maybe he was just a, a missed opportunity at Carolina. Who the heck knows? But AJ moving on, um, I guess the first defensive only defensive player on this list kind of surprisingly enough. And that's Julius Peppers, 2001 finished 10th in the voting. Um, Yeah. I mean, I don't really have to talk about Peppers. Everybody knows who he is just in the NFL for so long, legendary Carolina figures, such a good player for North Carolina and a guy that played basketball too. So it's even more impressive. You consider how good he was at basketball. And then he's on the other side, finishing top 10 in Heisman votes. And then going on to play in the NFL, as long as he did, maybe the greatest, I don't know if athletes, the right word in Carolina history, but that might be the right way to describe it. But again, Julius Peppers, everybody knows the name and the legend of Carolina and a guy from Rocky Mount area as well. So just a legend in the state as a whole. I mean, Rocky Mount, UNC, Carolina Panthers. What more do you want, you know? A lot of uh, Carolina athletes from way back in the 30s and 40s, 20s, 30s, 40s, played multiple sports. Ray mm-hmm. Ferris. Some, I'm trying to think of that off the top of my head now. Again, this is very organic. They had an all-American football player played in the major leagues a little bit. Oh, wow. So they had they had a lot of two-sport stars. Um, but I, I think Peppers might be the most notorious now. Because everybody either saw him or they they can hear stories that so they saw him in the NFL not that long ago. So yeah. he's fairly recent. He was dynamic. He was built in a way different from other guys. I mean, yeah. talking to him after a basketball game, and he's got his shirt off. You're like, good gracious, this is a basketball player. It's How crazy. can you move so so beautifully when you're so big? He just mm. had the ability to do that. He was. An electrifying football player in Carolina scored several touchdowns for the Tar Heels, some very long runs. He had a really long touchdown against Duke where he showed his acrobatic ability. He had a touchdown, um, like an interception, a, a tip grab, interception, return for a touchdown. Adam Pahola on National yeah. TV one night that he just outraced everybody and just showed some of that breathtaking stuff. 
the sacks and everything else. I think he finished. Not many guys, not many defensive players get votes. And, and you wonder, you know, why didn't Lawrence Taylor maybe get close? Yeah, I was wondering that. I was thinking that. But I believe, and when you were talking about Peppers, I was thinking, I believe that that was the year Hugh Green, defensive end for Pittsburgh, got a lot of votes. Mm -hmm. So so there's only an appetite to vote for one defensive guy by most people. And Green just got all of them. You know, Woodson won it in 97, I think, for Michigan. He was a defensive player. So Julius got the 10th. I I imagine the other nine guys in front of him were all offensive players. So that's pretty impressive. And also Carolina – had suddenly fallen off. I mean, they were yeah. uh, they were okay that year, but they went to, what seven and six and ninety eight first year after Mac, and then they uh, had that terrible season in ninety nine when they didn't even have a quarterback half the year. So um, Julius w- was probably affected by that a little bit. But oh, yeah. man, I've told you a lot of Julius Pepper stories. Yeah, and they're all good stories. Yeah, he's just. Uh... Uh, yeah, just a legend of, of the state in a lot of ways. And yeah, just a freak athlete, especially when you think about, I know back in the day, a lot of guys did, but when you think of somebody excelling in the dual sport, like he did at North Carolina, especially for a basketball program like that in 2001, it, it just, I think it even makes that more impressive. Cause you don't, you just don't see that anymore, man. You really don't, you, you, got, you might get a little baseball football crossover, but that's really all you're getting anymore. So a guy to do that essentially 20 years ago, and only retired from the NFL a few years ago is just make just that that impressive. Well, and you made a good point about very quickly. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I think the most notorious one in the football basketball was Charlie Ward won a Heisman Trophy and played with the New York Knicks for a long time. Yeah, that's pretty. Di- yeah, that's pretty dang. And he was actually a he was a really good baseball player when he, when he first got to FSU. He was also class president. Just to do it, those are the guys. It's just not fair, man. It's like, is he, what can't that a person like that do? You know what I mean? I mean, come on, it's, man. It's it's yeah. it, it's it's wild. It's wild to hear stuff like there's that. There's a flaw there somewhere. Don't know what yeah. it is, but there's a flaw somewhere. We all have them. That's for sure, man. And last guy on this list, AJ, last season, Drake May finished 10th in the voting as well. I think a lot of people are excited to see what he can do this year on, on a really good North Carolina team that I think people have some pretty high expectations for, especially when you got a guy like Drake at the helm going into his second season at the starter. But I kind of forgot he finished 10. It was almost like, oh, yeah, he did. He really was that good. And and you just see now how historically how that stacks up in the history of Carolina becoming one of only six players to ever do that just speaks to how good he is, right, AJ? But I think people are excited to see if he can go up that list a little bit more. And, hey, maybe we'll even finish number one this year. But Carolina's going to have to win a lot of football games for that to happen. But, yeah, Drake May, man, just I think the best is yet to come. And I think that's even more exciting for Carolina fans. Well, when they were nine and one, they beat Wake. I remember getting in my car at. Uh, I remember Wake closes the press box like an hour and a half after the they game. They kick you out, yeah. Mine, which is stupid, and you have to drive all the way home to finish. Yeah, work. considering the um, fact the press conferences don't wrap up for at least an hour, yeah, it's pretty stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, ridiculous. So I get in my car to drive home, and Drake's on with ESPN Radio, mm-hmm. and they're talking about him being a Heisman candidate because they were nine and one. Now, they obviously went the wrong way. They went into a big, big, big ditch. A little bit of a slump, Instead yeah. Instead of going this way and continuing to win. If they would have continued to win and he would have continued to throw for 300 yards a game, I think he would have been in the top five for sure. But they lost their last – they lost the next three, and the voting was after the ACC championship game. And and he wasn't great, and he struggled a little bit. And we've talked about why before, and I need to go into that now. I, I think – Coming back for a year after finishing the top ten is pretty pretty rare and unique because Choo Choo did it. Yeah, that's it. So I, he he has start from a pretty good position, and I, I think he's got a really good shot to win. We're not going to do a podcast about whether he can or not, but he was certainly top ten worthy last year. Sam never finished that top ten. I think he was positioned. In, it's a little surprising, maybe he didn't in twenty. Yeah, when those running so backs became the those running backs suddenly got a lot of the attention late in the year, and then in twenty one, they just they struggled. So, I think if that team would have had a really good year, Sam would have been in the conversation at least to get some votes, but he didn't. So Drake, I think, has a good shot this year. They're well positioned as a team to with a good enough schedule that maybe some things can happen where he finishes in the top three or four and maybe it's an invite to New York, which would be a hell of an accomplishment for Atari Hill because you know, they don't grow, they don't grow Heisman's in Chapel Hill. No. So they grow a lot of other stuff, but they don't grow. Heisman, so yeah, they we'll really don't considering the fact, yeah, we've talked about uh, from 1948 till today, 
know, 80 year span or so. And you've only got six on that list, even finishing in the top 10. So I think that speaks and, to, and, yeah. And only two in the last 47 years. Wild man. Tenth. Yeah, it is, man. It, it really is wild. And I think it, it, a guy like Drake, you should enjoy it while it's here. Cause again, it just doesn't happen very often. He's that good. And I think a lot, I'm excited to see and interested to see what he can do this year because We'll talk about it in separate podcasts as the season gets closer, but I think he's, I think it's shaping up for him to have a really, really big year. And again, he, he's just that good. And we'll see what happens, you know, this season coming up. Cause I do expect him to be even that much better, but AJ that, that'll do it for this daily drop talking about, you know, Carol, uh, former Carolina players and, and current Carolina players with Drake may on that list that have finished in the top 10 of Heisman voting going again, all the way back to 1948 with Charlie Choo Choo justice at number two. So always enjoy talking a little Carolina football history. It's always pretty fascinating to, to kind of hear about. And uh, again, even it's it just so much historical stuff that I think because of how good the basketball program is and how historical that is, it kind of gets lost in the sauce a little bit with the football program, but it's an historic program as well in a lot of different ways. And again, we'll, I'm sure we'll do more daily drops on the history of Carolina football throughout the off season. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Keep it locked to Tar Illustrated.com. You can come sign up for 833 a month, become a premium subscriber. You can become a Carolina insider too. links below and go check us out on social media at Hill illustrated on Twitter and at Tar Hill illustrated on Facebook. I've been Jacob Turner. He's Andrew Jones. Make sure you like share, subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. See you on the next one. Thanks. Thanks.